Well, hello and welcome to this Microsoft Reactor session entitled Build a Mobile App with Xamarin. It's great to be here with you and I'm looking forward to spending the next 60 minutes uh, kind of talking about Xamarin and Xamarin Forms and uh, how that tool can be used to facilitate mobile development. So welcome. Great to have you here. A um, little bit about the reactors, right? What are the reactors? Well, reactors are community spaces where we as community members and technology professionals can meet, learn from one another and connect, right? And as we all are trying to stay ahead of this uh, innovation curve, uh, this uh, things like the reactors, these free sessions that we can get where we can get together and talk technology, uh, are really, really helpful in my opinion. They help me uh, to, you know, kind of uh, stay on the uh, cutting edge of technology, know what's coming and get some experience and information from people who know more about it than I do to help give me a lift in that area. So it's great to have you here. Uh, we do have uh, reactors across the globe. We have multiple people, multiple locations uh, represented here even on this call. Uh, I'm actually in the States in Columbus, Ohio, uh, but I know we have uh, multiple locations represented here. So it's great to get together. I, I, I do hope that at some point uh, we will be able to get back to uh, in-person meetings again, right? But for now, these types of events where we can connect virtually and uh, talk technology, I think are tremendous, uh, tremendously helpful in terms of advancing our career and our knowledge. So today we're going to be talking build a mobile app with Xamarin and specifically we're going to be focusing on uh, Xamarin forms. So and we'll kind of see what that means. We'll talk about the architecture of Xamarin and some of the various components available to us uh, within Xamarin and kind of what that all means. Um, Quick introductions, uh, Maria Dror is uh, on the line. She is the Regional Reactor Program Manager for Microsoft. She will be curating the Q&A. So I do wanna draw your attention to the Q&A. Please uh, take advantage of that to type comments or questions. She will be curating that and then we'll make those available to, uh, to us to review. And then I can uh, sort of answer them as they come in. Uh, so please do take advantage of that. If you have questions, if you have comments, um, you know, po uh, post those there so that we can, um, you know, make this as interactive as possible, right? Uh, my name is Alan Sanders. I am a principal cloud architect, uh, and I've been in technology architecture design development for about 25 plus years. So worked in several verticals, uh, finance, industry, I'm sorry, insurance, I've worked in some really large companies, uh, some small companies, and I've uh, done quite a bit of technology consulting. But the one thing that I want you to know about me uh, that I think is most uh, most prevalent, or I'm sorry, most uh, relevant, relevant to what we're talking about here is uh, that I'm passionate about learning, right? I, I have a passion for my own learning. I have a passion for others learning. Um, I think it is, uh, you know, this industry, what makes it great is every day there's a new challenge, right? There's something new to learn. Uh, I don't ever uh, find myself or expect to find myself uh, getting bored, right? But that means uh, just always that we always are learning. And so I'm passionate about that for myself and I'm passionate about uh, that for others. And so I really hope that you do get uh, a lot of really helpful information um, out of our time together today. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and talk agenda. So what are we going to be covering? Well, we're going to have sort of a combination of some slides with some information, and then we're going to do some coding together. <clears throat> so we're going to have an introduction. We're going to talk about the Xamarin Forms architecture. We're going to build out an initial Zam uh, Xamarin Forms application that we can use to help us uh, kind of uh, explore what the project structure looks like in a Xamarin Forms uh, application. And then we're going to finish off by um, uh, with some uh, additional enhancements to our uh, Xamarin Forms uh, application, which I think will be pretty cool. 
Um, I think you got a Dan, no problem. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah, uh, we're going to talk some additional enhancements to our Xamarin Forms uh, application, including integration with on-device capabilities that I think is pretty cool. Um, and then uh, we'll finally sort of wrap up with a summary and, and be on our way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right in. So, and I've got a little bit of a cold, so pardon me for one sec. Didn't want to cough in anyone's ear. Okay, so what is Xamarin Forms, right? Xamarin Forms is a framework for cross-platform native mobile development, and that's key, right? The fact that we can build in one tool, but then run uh, our application natively across multiple platforms um, is uh, pretty important, right? Xamarin Forms gives us the ability to reuse common code, backend, uh, business logic, right? and UI, right? So we can reuse user interface across the platforms as well. And we'll talk about what that looks like here shortly. And it also then supports integration with platform specific features, right? And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in just a sec. Okay. Um, so why Xamarin Forms, right? Well, uh, Xamarin Forms, the reason I think it is a great tool is it uh, abstracts development away from the specific platform, which can be helpful, right? We'll talk about, uh, you know, there are some times when, when you don't want to abstract away, but in a lot of cases, we can abstract the development away from that specific platform and get some lift, right? Get some efficiencies by building once and then running in multiple places. We're going to use uh, C Sharp and XAML to build a common UI. Right, and that's what you can do with Xamarin Forms. Uh, it provides access. You still have access to platform-specific SDKs, right? So that we can translate to native versions of these controls that we're building on our forms. But uh, it also uh, offers better performance, right? So a, a lot of mobile technologies, uh, you'll use, uh, especially cross-platform. You will build out your interface. You'll build out your logic. And then that will uh, ultimately be hosted in a web view on the device, which works, right? But with Xamarin Forms, we can take our application and something called platform renderers will translate the uh, user interface and the application into the native version of that code, right? And native is always going to be uh, better performant. Okay. So a little bit about you know what it is, why uh, it, I think it's a good tool or a, a good platform. For the purposes of our time together today, um, the development tooling we're going to be using today, and, and really what you would use um, in this, uh, you know, for mobile development with Xamarin, we're going to use Visual Studio 2019. And uh, couple of notes on Windows. If we're running on a Windows machine, we need to install the mobile development with .NET workload. And I will show you uh, how to do that as we get into the demo. Um, if you're on a Mac OS, if you're running Visual Studio for Mac, then um, that, that the standard installation uh, already includes uh, all of the required tooling you'll need for Xamarin development. Now, I should mention uh, an, an additional sort of distinction. If you are uh, building for Android, um, you can let, and I'm on a Windows machine, right? I'm building for Android. I can leverage um, emulators and simulators uh, on that machine to uh, do my testing. But if I want to build for uh, iOS, I either need to have a Mac, right? Or I need to have connectivity to an iOS device so that I can actually uh, test. Now, you know, bottom line, when we're building mobile applications, um, we ultimately need to make sure that we are testing on a device uh, anyway, right? That's important uh, because what we see in a simulator may not be uh, exactly what we see on the device, or there may be something else going on there that we need to just account for and accommodate. So testing on the device or against the device is important anyway, but just be aware of that sort of distinction. I don't have a Mac. I have a, a Windows 10 Surface Book here, so <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, testing in an Android uh, emulator. But um, you know, you can find documentation on on how to, um, and and I'll provide you with some links towards the end there on how you can 
you know, move to uh, testing in, in Mac as well. So any questions or comments? Uh, let me pause there for just a minute. Oh yeah, Matthew says Xamarin, so exciting. Can't wait for all the new things coming as well. Yeah, so if you uh, were aware of Build 2020, there was some discussion about Maui, right? Which is just further cementing that cross-platform capability of XAML. Uh, so great, great things to come for sure. So definitely a thumbs up on that one. I think you're uh, absolutely right on target there, uh, Matthew. All right, so <clears throat> let's talk uh, Xamarin Forms architecture. You know, what what does this sort of look like, right? So let's talk technology stack. So <clears throat> with, uh, you know, mobile applications, uh, sort of the lowest level, which if any, uh, sorry, we have another question here, which if any of Microsoft's phone apps are built with Xamarin? You know, that's a great question. I, I honestly don't know that. Um, I would suspect that there are uh, quite a few. Um, <clears throat> I have done some searching to kind of find out, uh, you know, top 10 uh, applications built on Xamarin, and there are quite a few heavy hitters um, in the industry today, not just at Microsoft, but across multiple companies and corporations, and that uh, influence is continuing to grow. So that's a great question. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer. Uh, I'll probably look that up when we're done here, because I think that would be that would be good to know. Uh, for future sessions of this of this class. So yeah, thanks for that. Um, <coughs> for mobile development, we have you know the mobile OS layer, which is sort of the lowest layer, right? And that keeps us right, right close to the device, right? Now we can build mobile applications at that at that level, right at that layer. But it's a little bit more complex, right? And typically what we're doing at that layer, is um, we're building one version for Android and we're building one version for iOS. And some of the skills required to build uh, the applications uh, in those cases, at that, especially at that mobile OS uh, layer, can be pretty uh, specialized, right? But it's doable. If we go up a layer, then we talk about the platform SDKs, right? Uh, so we can use tools, um, you know, like uh, Flutter, uh, Kotlin, et cetera, to <clears throat> build applications for Android or iOS uh, that leverages those SDKs. Um, and, um, and, and that works uh, as well, right? That's very, uh, very viable as a solution. So um, there's one question that was raised. Andrew says, can we please have this session recorded? Uh, it will be recorded and it will be available on YouTube on the Microsoft Reactor uh, channel. So. Thanks for that. Um, great to have you. However long you can stay, that's awesome. But yes, to, do please go back and, and watch that session. So the platform SDKs, we can build applications there, but again, we're building one version for Android. We're building one version for iOS, right? And so that's doable, but if we wanna support both, right? Uh, we've got sort of twice the development effort roughly. Okay, um, the next layer, right? is where we start to introduce Xamarin. So we've got Xamarin.iOS, Xamarin.Android. There's actually a Xamarin.Mac as well, but we're just focused on these two today. Um, we have access to the .NET framework, base class libraries. And so <clears throat> this is where we start to sort of abstract development away from the device. We can, uh, at this layer, we can build shared code modules, right? Backend logic, business logic, we can build that and share it across the two platforms. But with this one, we're still forced to build uh, a version of the interface for iOS and a version of the UI for Android, right? So we have to build the UI separately still, even though at least we're able to start to share some backend business logic, okay? And again, that's doable, right? Xamarin.iOS, Xamarin.Android, those underpin uh, Xamarin Forms anyway, right? As we'll see here in just a bit. But you can do that, right? What would be cool is if we could build uh, a UI once as well as the backend code, right? And then uh, make that available natively on uh, multiple platforms. And that's exactly what Xamarin Forms uh, allows us to do. And we'll talk about sort of how and why in just uh, a minute. 
We're going to talk about Xamarin Forms. We're going to talk about uh, Xamarin Essentials, which in my opinion is also a very, very cool uh, sort of component of all of this. So any questions, uh, comments, again, please feel free to leverage the, um, the, the Q&A as you have been doing. That's awesome. I love having engagement with uh, with uh, the groups that we're that we're meeting with. All right, so um, what does Xamarin Forms provide? Well, Xamarin Forms gives us access to common controls, right? Buttons, text entry, et cetera. We get a, a pretty rich layout engine for some sophisticated page and workflow design. Uh, we got support for multiple types of navigation. There's master detail, nav bars, et cetera. We have uh, support for XAML and data binding. So XAML is a declarative, uh, UI, similar to HTML, right? We can build out a template of our uh, UI using XAML, and then we can inject spots where we want to dynamically bind data in our model, right? There are patterns like MVVM, our model view view model, that we'll want to leverage uh, in more complicated applica uh, applications. You know, please take advantage of uh, an opportunity to look that up, MVVM, model view view model. That's a great uh, architectural pattern you can use for uh, XAML applications in general, and especially in your, your Xamarin forms. Um, <laughs> but we've got support for XAML. We've got support for data binding. Um, we've got uh, opportunity to do some extensibility, right? There are several NuGet packages available to us uh, for extending. There uh, are native controls available, custom controls. One of the NuGet packages that we will be using um, that is, I think, extremely helpful is the Xamarin Essentials package. So it is available as a NuGet package. And it is included uh, automatically in Xamarin Forms uh, VS templates. So, okay, yesterday .NET 5 was released. How does this affect the Xamarin development? Um, it, the advancements in .NET 5 uh, includes uh, more of a unification around the MAUI um, user interface uh, language and approach. And so uh, Xamarin is definitely going to uh, pull in those uh, .NET 5 capabilities and uh, is only going to get better from there, right? So that unified sort of approach to the .NET language is going to include unification at the UI level as well. And that just uh, increases the ability to uh, support cross-platform development, not just at the uh, logic layer, but at the UI layer as well. So great question, great comment. Um, Xamarin Essentials is going to really, the key with Xamarin Essentials is it gives us access to device capabilities, right? So if we want to be able to, you know, write our code in C Sharp, right, build our UI in XAML, it's awesome. But uh, Xamarin Essentials then will uh, enable us to get access to things like location services, phone dialing, et cetera. And we're going to see that in our in our demo or in the sample application that we build here shortly. So Xamarin Forms, Xamarin Essentials, uh, very, very uh, key and cool technologies in, in my opinion. And I hope you feel the same after we have a chance to dig a little deeper here. All right, so we're going to build our initial Xamarin Forms application. So what are we building? Well, we're going to build a pretty simple interface, right? That includes a label, a text entry, and two buttons. The text entry is going to default to 1855 Xamarin. So the text entry will allow a user to enter a phone number in uh, letter format, right? And then we'll click one button or allow the user to tap one button uh, to translate that phone number in uh, letter format to numeric format. So the X will be translated to a nine, et cetera, right? Based on the standard layout of our, of our uh, dial pad. And then after that translation, there will be a second button that if the user taps that second button, we can actually uh, help allow them to automatically dial that number, right? So instead of translating, and then the user has to copy the number, and then the user has to switch over to the to the uh, phone application and the paste and then dial, we can with the tap of a button using Xamarin Essentials, automatically launch them to the dialing, the phone dialer application, right? And the cool thing is with one line, we can code that 
and have it run the way it's supposed to in either Android or iOS, right? Because the phone dialing applications are going to be different on those two platforms, right? But with Xamarin Forms, we just say phone dialer, right? And then it, it is smart enough to know how to how to route that <clears throat> accordingly when it gets to the device. And we'll talk about, about how and why here shortly. So we're going to be using Visual Studio 2019 and C Sharp. We're going to be using Xamarin Forms, Xamarin Essentials. And here is a, I'm going to post a link into the uh, announcement window that you can use to follow along. So please um, hit that link if you'd like to sort of follow along with me here as we as we proceed. Now, <clears throat> this is running in the Microsoft Learn platform, which I don't know if you've used Microsoft Learn before, but I think it's very, very cool. Uh, in the Microsoft Learn platform, there are multiple learning paths. And those learning paths, what's nice about them is they include a nice combination of uh, technical documentation about a specific technology. And there are a slew of technologies available uh, with coverage. And then that documentation is coupled with um, tutorials or, you know, exercises, challenges, step by step, um, you know, opportunities to kind of practice the, the coding and the technology that you're that you're reading about. Then there are uh, challenges uh, like uh, questions, uh, you know, knowledge checks rather, um, that sort of test your knowledge as you proceed. And what you're able to do through this is, is kind of uh, through kind of a fun journey, walk through different technologies, learn about those technologies, uh, earn experience points, and then you can use those experience points to achieve badges. So uh, it gives you a nice way to sort of chart your your learning uh, experience as you as you proceed in a given in a given area. So there is a larger learning path that this particular <clears throat> module is uh, related to. We're going to be looking at what is the main difference? Well, we got a question here. What is the main difference between React Native and Xamarin? Uh, let's see, I developed an app in Xamarin and found it hard to build a custom UI. Well, a lot of times with React Native, uh, that's more of a reactive sort of UI uh, approach. I don't know if there's necessarily a main difference. React Native is um, pretty popular. I'm not sure what the what the questions might have been or why it was hard to build a custom UI. So, uh, I mean, good good question. Um, is Xamarin free to make a single app and publish? Uh, yes, it is. So uh, now if <clears throat> if you're going to if it's going to be part of a larger uh, corporation, then um, you know that you might run into some licensing considerations enterprise there that you need. But for smaller uh, organizations, you can absolutely do that. React Native and Xamarin. Um, you know, there's two different technologies, so, uh, you know, kind of similar, similar concepts. Um, but it's just different technologies. One is going to use, uh, you know, JavaScript, TypeScript. Uh, Xamarin is going to use C Sharp. That's probably the biggest difference. Okay. Great questions. Keep them coming. Good comments. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to hop into this introduction link. And I'm actually going to step through a couple of these because um, we have. Uh, really been walking through this information already in the, the slides that I've shared with you. And we're going to skip the knowledge checks right now just because we we are tight on time. So let's go ahead and move to creating our first Xamarin Forms application. So I'm going to launch Visual Studio 2019. All right, so I'm going to go to create a new project. Uh, take a second here for the templates to sort of spin up. All right, now if I search for mobile, and you know this mobile app, uh, Xamarin Forms should come up. 
Now, if on your system, mobile app Xamarin Forms doesn't come up and you're running on a Windows system, right? It could be because you don't have the mobile development with .NET workload installed. So for that, you can go to your Visual Studio installer. And eventually it will come up. Oh, there it is. Okay, so the Visual Studio installer is going to show me I have a 2017 installed, I have 2019 installed. What you'll do now, right now, there's an update available. So this button says update. Uh, when there's not an update available, it says modify, right? If I go here to more, I can see modify as well. And when you uh, navigate to modify, Right here, you'll see this mobile development with .NET workload. You need to make sure that's checked and installed, right? That is what provides access to these uh, templates, right? To the mobile uh, app Xamarin Forms templates. So we're gonna select this one, proceed uh, next. And then uh, we're gonna give our app a name, phone word and create it. Now, <clears throat> for the new mobile app, um, it's going to ask us to select the template, right? Do we want fly out, tabbed? In this case, we're just going to do blank, right? Because we're doing a fairly simplistic, straightforward interface for demonstration purposes. So we're going to go with the blank template. And then it asks us to specify which platforms we plan to develop for. Android, I iOS, both. There's also a universal Windows platform included here. I don't have that tool set installed uh, right now. But um, I'm going uh, to let, let it uh, leave it checked as Android and iOS so we can sort of see uh, how that looks in the Solution Explorer when this gets spun up. So I'm going to create. I think it's time for a new system for me. I need an upgrade. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if we look in Solution Explorer, uh, you should see this structure. So we have our pho phone word app, our project rather, excuse me. And then we've got two additional projects that got added for us automatically. Phone word Android and phone word dot iOS. OK, now you might look, be looking at that and going, oh, wait a minute, I thought you said I didn't have to develop this, you know, two different versions of the application, right? I thought I could develop one and have it deployed and executed on both. So that's true, but there are going to be uh, sort of the last mile for each platform where it's going to need to be, tra the code is going to need to be translated right into the platform specific implementation. And so what ends up happening is yes, we have a phone word dot Android and we have a phone word dot iOS, but typically these tend to be very, very thin, right? This is where we code our application. This is where we build our application. Now we might have other supporting DLLs uh, in place as well, but uh, this is where we're gonna build our UI. And you know this is what's going to sort of underpin both of these. And then when we go to run this on either Android or iOS, what we have here will be passed through the platform renderers and the various SDKs to uh, result in a version of the app that will run natively on the platform that we're targeting. So a couple of things to notice here. Uh, under dependencies, We've got uh, references to Xamarin Essentials, Xamarin Forms, and then we've got a reference to the .NET standard library because we are doing cross-platform development here. 
in phoneword.android, uh, you'll see reference wise, we have uh, references to those two uh, packages as well. But we also have a reference to the common phone word, phone word application, right? And then we have a uh, reference to mono.android, which is uh, the same thing as xamarin.android, right? Which is gonna be um, sort of the, the, the platform a specific library that can translate our application into an Android native format. And then under iOS, we're also going to have references to uh, Xamarin Essentials and Forms as well, and uh, a reference to the phone word application, and then a reference to Xamarin.iOS. Now with this application, right, uh, there is an app class. So there's an app XAML file and then if I right click this in uh, view code there is an app can we divide so the question is can we develop for just the web as a web page um, with Xamarin um, you you really wouldn't right Xamarin is more for mobile technologies you for for web uh, if you wanted to use the Microsoft platform you would use um, ASP.NET uh, instead uh, most likely right and that is one one difference between Xamarin and other uh, technologies now I will say that you could build uh, shared code modules right that could support uh, a mobile version on Android, a mobile version on iOS, and a web version, but from a UI perspective, uh, you probably would have separate UIs there uh, just because of the differences in the technology. Now, that is the difference with other uh, sort of platforms. There are other platforms that you're building on web tech, so then that web tech can be, uh, you know, sort of spun up and run in different ways, but it's a little different here with Xamarin. Great question. <coughs> so we're going to have this app class and on startup, this app class is what's going to be uh, used to launch our application, right? And on startup, we're going to create a new instance of this main page. And this main page represents our first screen. And really, it's the only screen we have in the application. But we've got some XAML here, right? Hierarchical declarative a definition of our UI. I'm going to go in here and just make a change. Welcome, Microsoft Reactors. To Xamarin Forms. I'm going to save that. Now, a um, couple of things here. In uh, Xamarin, if we look at main activity, which is, I'm sorry, in the um, Android uh, project, and by the way, these are called head projects. The platform specific projects are called head projects. So in the Android head project, we have a, um, a call here to xamarin.forms.forms.init. And then we're going to load our application with a new instance of this app class, right? So that's how we launch it in Android. In iOS, in the main class, we're going to see, I'm sorry, the main method, we're going to see a reference to this app delegate. If we look at app delegate, we're going to see again a call to xamarin.forms.forms.init, and we're going to load uh, the application by creating a new instance of this same app class. All right, so, <clears throat> you know, not nothing very interesting here just yet, right? We've just got a pretty simple application that we are, um, we've made a little bit of a tweak to. Let's uh, sort of look at how we go about running this. Now, again, as I said, this is gonna be on uh, an Android emulator, right? So under tools, Android, there's this Android device manager. I'm going to open that up. So you can now if I just started this application, it would walk me through the process of building this uh, emulator as well. This sort of virtual device, uh, but I've already built it ahead of time, so I'm going to I'm going to use it. It can take a little bit of time as well, so that's part of the reason why I've, I've pre built it because we have only have 60 minutes. Um, but what you um, you know want to keep in mind here is uh, we've got a particular version of the API 28, right? It's a Pixel 2. Uh, we can add Google Play support to our emulated device, 
and that's key if you want to test things like Google Maps in your um, in your emulator in your application. So we've got this uh, stood up right previously. Uh, I'm going to start this. And it it may take a minute here to start up just because um, it's it's the first time. Now, one thing I did do and that you can do. Uh, it's funny you see the. This was my. Running the application uh, in the same session I gave uh, last night. Uh, funny. Um, <clears throat> now you've you know the big reveal. You you've already seen what's gonna <laughs> we're gonna land. Bummer. Uh, but this emulator, right? So what I did is I uh, built out, or, or one of the things that you can do to help speed up the emulator, right? Is you can leverage something uh, like Hyper V. So I've got Hyper V on this uh, system. I've got Windows hypervisor support in place. I've added those features, and um, uh, Windows can use that to sort of accelerate the the emulator, but it can be a little a little bit chuggish depending on the performance of your machine. Or if you're like me, where I'm about due for an upgrade, it might run a little a little slower, but it will run, right? So what I'm going to do is I've got my emulator started up. I'm going to start this application, and I am going to turn my video off just to um, because in case the video gets a little choppy while it's processing this. But what it's basically doing is it's going to be building this application out. And, uh, you know, copying the application to this instance of the device, right? Now, one thing that I needed to do was I needed to mark uh, one of these projects as the startup project, okay? This is not our startup project, right? This is sort of the the brains behind the application, but these are really the, the ways into the application, right? So the phoneword.android project was already set up as startup by default. If it hadn't been, or if I wanted to change, you can right click and there will be a menu item for set as startup, right? There's also the ability or a way to <clears throat> set both the Android and iOS applications for startup at the same time, right? So if you wanted to test both at the same time, you could launch both uh, projects as a startup. OK, and so that's uh, running a little bit. Um, probably won't take this long on your uh, system. As I said, mine, my system is uh, in need of an upgrade. So I'm going to let that. Oh, here we go. Never mind. So um, it's now copying the application to this virtual device. You know, and we the reason it, we, we said we wanted the phone word dot Android is our startup. And this start button was referencing that single emulator that I had already created, right? So that's why when I clicked the uh, play button, it automatically uh, went to that emulator application here. <coughs> And we're going to see our message, which again isn't very exciting, um, but there you go. All right. So we have our welcome Microsoft reactors to Xamarin Forms. Now, one thing that I think is very cool is there's something called hot reload, right? What hot reload means is if I make changes to my XAML, right, I can leave the application running. If I make changes to my XAML, for example, adding two additional adding two additional exclamation points. OK, I'm going to save that while it's still running. And hot reload. Is going to automatically refresh the uh, UI for me in my in my emulator. So that works for XAML. If I was uh, making changes in, in sort of the back end C sharp code, I would have to stop and restart. But um, hot reload is something kind of nice uh, for uh, sort of your UI and uh, XAML development. So, so again, nothing very special here, right? We've just displayed a message, but we've had a chance to you know use this as a way to sort of look at what the initial structure of an application, uh, you know, how it appears. So I'm going to stop this. You know, my 
<clears throat> my emulator will continue to run. And let's go back to our uh, presentation here just to talk through a couple of additional things. We got another question that came in. Can you enable hot reload so you don't have to build your app every time to see UI changes? Yes, it's actually enabled by default. Um, so uh, kind of a nice feature. Again, if you're making changes in your XAML, now that assumes your, your uh, UI changes are in the XAML, right? If you're building your UI in C-sharp, which we're gonna look at here in a bit, uh, then that's a different story. <clears throat> so good question, good observation. Uh, let's look briefly at the project structure. So what's included in this solution and project structure? Well, we've got uh, the project that contains the shared code and the shared UI, right? We've got then our head projects, which are the platform specific projects, right? Android and iOS. We've got the app class, which is what gets created and loaded by the head projects on launch. We uh, will have one or more pages, right? That makes up our UI and its navigation. Uh, views uh, are basically like your UI controls on the pages. And then uh, each of those head projects are gonna have platform renderers that will take our uh, C-sharp and XAML uh, UI elements and uh, create native controls at runtime. Okay. The other thing we have available <clears throat> are something called layouts, right? And layouts are just constructs that dictate how your uh, how your controls and pages and views should be organized, right? A lot of times when we develop, we think sort of top to bottom, left to right, but layouts give you the ability to uh, sort of shift that. So it's basically, they're basically containers that uh, dictate how things will be organized when you put something in them, right? So I might have a set of controls. If I put those controls in a stack layout, then they're gonna be stacked vertically by default, right? Or if I can change uh, that to a horizontal stacking, right? Um, there's a grid layout, right? If I wanna create a grid, there's relative, um, absolute, uh, et cetera. So, <laughs> the layout is the container that dictates how the sort of controls and, and pages and views that you put into it will be organized. And then there's also, you know, margin padding spacing that we can use to sort of manage the positioning of controls relative to the layout and relative to other controls in the layout. All right. So let's make some enhancements to our Xamarin app so that it's maybe a little bit more interesting. Let's switch back over here to uh, here. And I'm going to, <clears throat> and a lot of this text here are things that I just sort of walk through in, uh, in slides. Um, here are some of the views or controls that we have available to us, right? And um, here's, I, I think what's really cool. When I build a button in XAML or in C Sharp, right? I'm going to use, I'm using that as a Xamarin or defining that as a Xamarin.forms.button. But the platform renders in the head projects for Android will convert that natively at runtime to an Android.widget.button. iOS, the head project, will convert it natively to a UI kit.ui button, right? And being able to develop my UI and my application once and then run it in multiple places just is a tremendous lift in terms of efficiency and can be a tremendous lift in terms of quality, right? Now, there, there, like I said, with other platforms, there are things we can do to sort of uh, share some of that code, but being able to build the UI and the backend logic once uh, cuts down on the amount of testing, probably cuts down on the amount of bugs, um, et cetera. So really nice uh, opportunity for a uh, gain in efficiency there. Um, here's some of the information about the layouts that we talked about. Uh, again, I've sort of already walked through that, but you know, I'm going to link this uh, in at the end. Definitely go back through and you know review uh, further. Well, let's go ahead and move to <coughs> this create a phone number translator app. All right, so <clears throat> there's uh, code provided for us, and so you watching me type is probably not super interesting. I'm gonna copy this code, 
paste it into our application, but I will walk through what's happening, right? So let me go back over to our Visual Studio app. I'm gonna add a new class. called phone word translator. And then I'm gonna highlight that and just replace it with the code I copied from the Microsoft Learn module, All right? We'll come back to this. I'm actually gonna uh, put a breakpoint in this and we'll step through the code um, for a couple of reasons. So we can sort of walk through what's happening here but then also uh, demonstrate that we can debug uh, as well. So I'm gonna save that. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is sort of restructure our UI. So the UI right now is uh, in Z uh, XAML, right? It's this main page dot XAML here. We're gonna get rid of that, right? And we're gonna build our UI uh, completely in C Sharp. So we can sort of see the different elements, how they relate to one another, and how they ultimately end up getting placed in the container that we are uh, using here for our page. But know that you could, you know, uh, if we go here, that you can click this button to see a design view uh, of what you have in your XAML. You can, you know, vary from a an Android view versus an iOS view, and then <clears throat> depending on the Android view or iOS, you can, you know, specify different flavors, right? Uh, different form factors, right? To sort of understand how it's going to look. You can do, uh, you know, landscape instead of portrait. Rather than that, though, I just, you know, this XAML code here, you can look at it in design as well. But what we're going to do in this case is I'm actually going to delete that. So it's too bad. We barely knew it. All right. <clears throat> what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a new class. Called main page still. OK, and it needs to be main page because in our app here, right, if we look at the code behind this, it's looking to create a new instance of main page when uh, the application starts up, right? So right now we're getting an error because main page doesn't have, uh, it's not public, right? So we don't have a constructor available for it. Um, but let me copy this and we'll fix that right up. So here's our main page class, right? <clears throat> um, a bunch of red squigglies here because there are things that, um, uh, or that Visual Studio doesn't recognize, I can fix that by adding a using directive for Xamarin.forms. And then uh, now we have access to our various uh, Xamarin components. We <clears throat> have a constructor here that's gonna set padding uh, for the application. We have a stack layout, which again is going to, by default, stack our controls vertically. And then we've got a spacing uh, setting in that. And then <clears throat> to that uh, children collection on the stack layout, we're gonna add a new label. We're gonna add a new text entry with a default value. We're gonna add a new button uh, for translate and a new button for call. Now we could build this in XAML as well. Right, and then use C# -sharp to do some, um, you know, command binding and MVVM handling behind the scenes. But this is a little bit more of a simplistic application for our focus right now. Okay, um, so we've got, you know, sort of our base interface. Now, <clears throat> the other thing we're going to do is add a couple of event handlers to our buttons. So I'm going to create a string. Translated number. We got a new question that came in. What MVVM framework can I use with uh, Xamarin? There are uh, several out there. Um, 
I mean, pretty much any MVVM framework you should be able to use because it's XAML underneath the covers, right? You should be able to use uh, pretty much any MVVM framework um, that is built to run on .NET Core, .NET Standard, and then <clears throat> that can be leveraged as part of your, your XAML development. Good question, good interaction, really love it. Let's uh, <clears throat> stand up on our translate button. Let's create a new uh, event handler. And again, we could do this in XAML instead, right? Using the clicked attribute of a button uh, element. Let me do one for the call button. All right now, <clears throat> what I can do is just uh, leverage Visual Studio to generate that method for me, which is uh, pretty much going to be a standard event signature, right? Sender event args. OK, um, <clears throat> and those are going to um, you know, provide us uh, sort of the, the framework for the event processing that will happen when these buttons are tapped. So let me save that. If I go back over here. Here's my on translate and I'm going to skip down here because this is sort of the final version. Uh, I'm going to copy this. And for my on translate, oh, sorry, that's on call. For my on translate, I'm gonna paste it. And what on translate on tap is gonna do is it's going to grab that phone number that was entered. It's going to pass it through our translator routine, right? And if we got back, uh, if we if we got back a valid translated number, right? Then we're going to enable the call button and change the text on that button to reflect the translated number. If we did not get back a valid translated number, you know, it was a bad format or something, then the call button is going to be disabled and we're going to set the text equal to just the default of call. OK, so that's our translate. And then we're going to uh, add the shell of a, uh, actually, let me copy this entire thing. We're going to add the shell of a um, event handler for call. And so <clears throat> um, this dot display alert will be used to display an alert on the uh, application, right? And this is one of the powerful things about Xamarin, right? Displaying an alert on Android versus displaying an alert on iOS are going to be different things, right? But with one statement here, I can say await oh, this dot display alert. And the platform renderers in the Xamarin framework takes care of the necessary translation to accommodate the, the idiosyncrasies of the platform, right? So this is an awaitable uh, method. We're just going to display a confirmation message to the user. Hey, did you really want to call this number? If they click yes, we're going to do something here in a minute. If they click no, it'll just dismiss. OK, so let me take that. And then uh, let's put a breakpoint over here. And let me fire it up again. And I'm going to again turn off my video so we don't get choppiness there. <coughs> uh, often the follow up executions of the <clears throat> application can be um, a little bit faster just once uh, you've. Uh, primed the pump, if you will. And we'll see if that's the case in, in this instance. But what we're going to see basically is <clears throat> our stack, right? Our vertical stack uh, interface with a label, uh, text entry, and the two buttons. And then we'll get a chance to see um, about, you know, sort of um, Debugging. We'll sort of walk through that that translator uh, module here uh, shortly. All right. It's now pushing the. <clears throat> information, uh, the code to the device, which in this case is our emulator, right? Um, <clears throat> and then 
any moment. Here's our application, right? Our label, our text entry, and our two buttons in a vertical stack layout. So <clears throat> I'm gonna leave the 1855 Xamarin at the default and then click the translate. And that will take me here, right? So here's my input. I'm going to make sure that there was valid input. I'm gonna convert it to uppercase, right? If it wasn't already. And then I'm going to uh, create a string builder so I can process character by character. And what does that processing look like? Well, there's an extension method here. We know it's an extension method because the first parameter is this string, right? So we know that it is a string, an extension method for string. This is basically going to uh, check to see if the given character uh, is part of the given string. So we're saying, look, if the current character is one of these already, like this uh, first one is a one, then I don't need to translate it, right? I can just append it as is. The dash will be the same thing. Eight, five, five. Now, if we look at our string builder, we've got one dash eight, five, five. We've got one more dash. Now we've got, uh, we're coming up on the X, right? So we're going to hit this, uh, this character, then the character is X. It's not gonna be uh, contained there. So we're gonna go down to this translate number routine, which basically uses uh, uh, an array to represent the phone pad layout. We're gonna look for the given letter, figure out which index it's associated to uh, in this array, and then add two uh, to it. So in this case, it's an X, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, index seven. That's where we're gonna find it. So index seven plus two is gonna return a nine. So X is gonna get translated to a nine and so forth. So um, we see there nine, that gets appended and then we're continuing to build out our number. So I'm gonna uh, remove this and continue. And there is our translated number, right? Call 1-855-926, blah, blah, blah. Now I can tap this button, right? And here is our uh, alert. Would you like to call this number? If I hit, click yes, nothing's gonna happen right now, right? If I click no, it's just going to dismiss. All right, so let's stop that. And we've got one more thing to add here, or two more things to do. First thing we need to do is um, add permissions to our Android project, you know, so that when uh, the user installs our application, they will be prompted to give the application permission to do something on the user's behalf. And in this particular case, it's uh, dial the phone, right? So <clears throat> in the properties for the Android project, or the Android head project, I should say, <clears throat> I'm going to navigate to the manifest. Down here, the required permissions. I'm going to scroll down here and you see there's a lot available, right? I'm going to scroll down here to just call phone. Click that and save it. And then I'm going to add uh, some code here to actually do the dialing. Now, um, let me grab this code. Replace our on call method here. Now, this is what I want you to sort of see, right? We've got a couple of red squigglies here. Why? Because we are referencing Xamarin Essentials classes, so we need a using directive. But this right here, this Xamarin Essentials statement, we can use phone dialer.open and it will get translated natively to the dialer application in Android when it's run on an Android device and the iOS application on iOS when it's run on an iOS device. So just one statement, right? One simple statement uh, in uh, leveraging Xamarin Essentials that gives us access to that capability and is smart enough to know what type it, it is, right? Based on the device that we're deploying to. We have some, you know, sort of uh, uh, 
<clears throat> exception handling here. So for some reason, maybe the user chose not to uh, authorize uh, phone dialing. Um, not super, right? We just need some work, obviously. But uh, this is this right here. This line here is what will give us access to the dialing on the application. So let me save this and run it one more time. So oh, that's running. Oh, is there a recommended approach for unit testing Xamarin forms? That's a great, a great question. So I would say generally speaking, um, in terms of unit testing, um, a lot of times what we'll do, and that's what the MVVM uh, pattern is, is good for, right? Because it gives you separation of concerns for the different application, I'm mean, sorry, the different application components. And so um, your logic, you know, won't be, uh, your, your UI would be just UI. So all the logic that sits behind the UI should be in separate testable classes, right? Uh, so that's uh, that type of feature is what you're going to want to do um, to help to help unit test. Great question, and I'm glad somebody's uh, thinking about unit testing. That is key, right? Uh, unit testing is important. <clears throat> and then there are, you know, uh, from from that perspective, then um, you know you can test the majority of the business logic and the key uh, components that you have that uh, underpin the interface. Uh, separately and in isolation. And that's what you want to be able to do, right? You want to be able to truly unit test. So that's where mocking can come into place. You know, if you have uh, services that you are leveraging, um, uh, Xamarin Essentials, that is your code. Oh, that is so cool. Nice. Okay, thanks for sharing that. So um, I'm going to translate this, right? And now I'm going to call. I'm going to be alerted. If I click yes, it's going to flip me over to the dialing application in Android, pre-populated with the number that was translated, right? So, um, you know, very cool from my perspective. Gives you a lot of power. Gives you the ability to write it once and then run it in multiple places. And then with Xamarin Essentials, thank you, Matthew. Uh, we have access to. Um, <clears throat> we have access to you know, GP, or, um, device uh, capabilities as well, like GPS and, and phone dialing, et cetera. So um, <clears throat> that is, um, let's go ahead and return here to look at summary because we're just about out of time, uh, but I do want to wrap up a couple of things. <clears throat> what did we cover? We talked about the Xamarin Forms uh, high-level architecture. We talked about the Xamarin Forms project structure. Um, and then we built out a mobile application in Visual Studio 2019. Next steps. Well, I'm going to post a couple of links here. One is um, the full learning path that sits above this module. And I would suggest and recommend that you take the opportunity. Uh, will you show how to deploy the Google Play? Unfortunately, we don't have time. Uh, that's a uh, that's a great question, um, but there uh, is uh, good documentation available online uh, how to do that. So uh, apologies, we just didn't have time today to, to actually uh, do that. Um, but that link gives you access to the learning path that sits above this particular module. Uh, this uh, will give you uh, access to um, additional learning paths that are Xamarin related. And then here is a link to a Channel 9 series, video series for Xamarin 101 that you might find uh, useful. So um, that is really what I wanted to cover. I'm going to turn it back over to Maria to uh, talk about our, our survey. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you. That was a great, uh, great event. I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Um, as Alan mentioned at the beginning, we we uh, conduct surveys for our events. I appreciate if you can take a minute or two to complete the survey. You have the link on the screen. Um, I also shared it in the chat box and you just need to type in the event code 11874. Um, and I think, yes, that's it from my end. I see that we answered all questions. Um, we have one last question, but I'm not sure that we will have time to uh, to cover this one. 
Yeah, I'm just replying. I think it's a yes. great thought. Uh, leverage that survey, right? There's an opportunity there to specify that as something you'd like to cover in the survey. Okay, perfect. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you everyone for joining us. We hope to see you at our next event.